estimated billing system of charging for unmetered electricity consumers has been a lingering challenge as consumers in this system are mandated to pay far above what they consume on a monthly basis. There has been a series of complaints on the unreliability of supply from the distribution companies as well as high estimated bills for the energy being consumed. Now, despite government's efforts and interventions, the rise in estimated billing persists. Both the distribution companies and federal government are concerned about metering this section of consumers. And just this month again, another 21 billion naira released by the federal government to meter those especially on Band A. Now, the target by the federal government is to eliminate estimated billing by the end of 2024. But reports say the number of customers on estimated billing increased by 10% in the first quarter of 2024. So how much impact has been made in bridging the metering gaps by distribution companies? And what is the expected impact on the consumer with the recent approval by the federal government? Tonight on Weekend File, our focus is on ending estimated billing and federal government's release of 21 billion naira for discos. And our guest is Mr. Uket Obonga, Power Sector Analyst and Executive Secretary, Power Consumers Advocates of Nigeria. We'll bring you situation reports, of course, from across the country on the issue. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to Weekend File. I'm Ruth Aguela. First, let's bring you the news. <laughs> President Bola Tinumbu signs executive order to introduce zero tariffs, excise duties and value-added tax on imported pharmaceutical inputs. The order introduces zero tariffs on specified machinery equipment and raw materials, aiming to reduce production costs and enhance local manufacturers' competitiveness. Specified items include essential raw materials required for manufacturing of crucial health products like drugs, syringes and needles, long-lasting insecticidal nets and rapid diagnostic kits. The other also provides for establishing market shaping mechanisms such as framework contracts and volume guarantees to encourage local manufacturers. According to the Coordinating Minister of Health, Professor Ali Party, the other mandates collaboration among the Ministers of Health, Finance, as well as Industry, Trade and Investment to develop a harmonized implementation framework, expediting regulatory approvals and reducing bottlenecks. Party said agencies including the Nigeria Customs Service, NAFDAC, Standards Organization of Nigeria and Federal Inland Revenue Service will ensure implementation with special waivers and exemptions effective for two years. In other news, 103 Nigerians deported from Tokyo have arrived in Nigeria. Well, they were received at the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport by the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and Internally Displaced Persons. What is our Nigeria embassy doing? What are they doing in Turkey? Expressing grievances over alleged mistreatment by their host country, Turkey. These are Nigerians who have been forced back home for alleged breach of migration laws, including overstay of visa and irregular migration to the country. 13 years I've been in Turkey and um, I have my company registered in 2018. So uh, I've been doing my legitimate business in Turkey, freight forwarding. I am trapped right now because uh, they uh, cancelled my resident permit just because I changed my house address. Uh, ever since when I have been in Turkey, I've been having residence permits, you understand? It just got expired and they collected $700 from me for tax and insurance. I did not see my $700, I did not see my resident permit. But this is not the end of life. As part of its mandate to protect the rights of migrants in the country, 
the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons expressed federal government's commitment in ensuring that they are reintegrated into the society. Now that we have them here, we are hoping you know, to follow up on all uh, the allegations. As you see, we gave them forms to fill, profiling forms, follow up on all of them, those that require a support in whichever way we will do it. Whatever the situation is, these are Nigerians and Mr. President has directed to come and do a befitting reception for them. 103 mails were received by the federal government with starter packs and stipends given as part of short-term intervention measures in Abuja, Ruth Aguele. The need for Africa to return to moral, ethical and purposeful model of leadership to enable the continent to overcome its contemporary leadership challenges has been re-echoed. This time, it was a public presentation of three books written by Nigeria's former ambassador to Mexico and Canada, Professor Yowuse Haya in Abuja. Chukunonso Mwabuize Abut. The three books, Leadership, Leading Africa Out of Chaos, Beyond Ethnic Grievances, the Jukun Thief Crisis, as well as the English language and its discontents with other essays, not only draw attention to the oppressive nature of the English language and the need to change the narrative, also prefer practical solutions to leadership issues in Africa. The title, Bold and Unflinching, immediately sets the stage for a narrative that finds a dwelling at the crux of the continent's most tumultuous of landscapes, leadership in political governance. The Jukun Thief conflict is mirrored as just one instance out of the number of violent conflicts in the catalog of ethno-religious unrest plaguing communities and nationalities across Nigeria. The most interesting aspect of this book, which forms its title, I believe, is the continuation of the debate of the use of the English language as a lingua franca in Nigeria and indeed some African nations. The author is hopeful that the books kickstart meaningful conversations, inspire positive change and contribute to a deeper understanding of the complex situations and opportunities facing Nigeria and Africa. We need to all collectively come together and find a solution to build a strong nation, a strong nation where we are not subjects but we are all citizens. A strong nation where our democracy means that the citizen is the king. Why Professor Hai is trying to redirect us, we, especially we who are participants and we who call ourselves leaders, do we have the capacity or the comprehension to know what leadership is all about? It's a time for Africa, since we all know it's the next world, we must sit down with ourselves. The leaders must be purposeful in their style of leadership. With many scholarly works to his credit, this set of publications by Professor Yose Haye coincide with the commemoration of his 75th birthday anniversary. Chukunon Songwa Boise, NTN News. Well, education without good character is dangerous and the bane of Nigeria's development. Hence the need to build character alongside imparting of knowledge to students of tertiary institutions. This came to the fore at the fourth matriculation ceremony of Thomas at Deumi University, Kwara State. Ahmed Fulani reports that 306 students from six faculties were formally admitted into one of the fastest growing private universities in Nigeria. Emphasizing on the lack of good character in many students of Nigerian universities in recent times, the guest speaker, Professor Ulua Tusin at Tobatele, was concerned about the direction of university education at present, where inadequate funding, lack of training, breaking academic activities as a result of strike, as well as moral decadence, problems he submitted needed holistic approach towards addressing them. The management of private institutions of higher learning through the administrative structures are meant to address vices that are obvious in public institutions of higher learning. 
These vices include corruption, examination malpractice, immoral behavior. Then came the moment everyone had been waiting for, the matriculation performed by TAU's Vice Chancellor, Professor Francisca Ladipo, who admitted the students after they took the matriculation oath. I encourage you to embrace the opportunities that lie ahead. Engage actively in your studies, participate in extracurricular activities. The founder and chancellor of Thomas Adewumi University, Oko, Johnson Adewumi, was full of appreciation to God and the parents of the students who entrusted their children with the institution because of its track record of not only imparting standard knowledge but also building future leaders with good character. In addition to quality education which they get in a private university like this, we want them to be of good character so that they can influence this, their world in a positive manner. My aspiration is to become the best I can in my faculty of law. Keep working at that to get a very good result that will take me places. The university also launched its maiden newspaper, TAU Echo. The managing director of the North East Development Commission, Mohamed Goni Alkali, has expressed commitment to complete and commission all ongoing projects being carried out by the commission in Andamar State before the end of the year. He stated this while inspecting both the completed and ongoing projects across the three senatorial districts of the state. Yusuf Jika will tell us more. The Managing Director of North East Development Commission, Mohamed Goni Alkali, accompanied by the management of the Commission, visited Adamao State to access the level and quality of the ongoing and completed projects. The Commission expressed satisfaction with the work done so far on the 500 mass housing projects in Yola South, as well as the Accident and Emergency Unit at the Modibo Adamo University Teaching Hospital. They also inspected the mega schools under construction at each of the three senatorial districts of Adamawa State, cited at Song, Mobi, and Guyuk local government areas of the state, respectively. At the 2.5 kilometer access road in College of Education Hong and 40 housing units for the staff, which Mohamed Gonial Kali said the projects are meant to provide a conducive learning environment in the institution. Other projects inspected by the management of the NEDC are at the 2 kilometer Garkida Dabna Road project, water projects across the state, construction of bridges at Kuzum, Mayongayandi, and Dilchim, as well as a collapse bridge along Madagali Waga Road, which is linking Adamawa and Borno states and promised necessary intervention. Generally speaking, I think most of our projects across the states are doing well. You have seen them. And uh, we want to make sure that those that have some certain challenges. We look at those challenges and make sure that uh, we provide a circle of uh, a solution to those problems so that uh, those roads will be completed as soon as possible. The managing director of NEDC assured that the commission will continue to add value on the lives of the people in the Northeast through impactful projects. Some of the benefiting communities lauded the commission's developmental projects by restoring livelihood, especially at areas affected by insurgency in the Northeast. In Yola, Yusuf Jika, NT News. Well, a sad incident occurred in Borno State, and the State Police Command has confirmed that eight people were killed and 15 others sustained various degrees of injuries following a bomb explosion in Goza, local government area of Borno State. Police Public Relations Officer ASP Nahum Kenneth Dazo says the tragic incident occurred at 3.40 p.m. today. A woman carrying a baby detonated an improvised explosive device at a busy motor park in Mararaba T Junction in Goza town. The explosion claimed the lives of the woman, her baby and six others, with 15 individuals who sustained injuries currently receiving treatment at the General Hospital in Goza. Court Martial Federal Road Safety Corps, Shehu Mohammed says the Corps is planning to review the special martial operations nationwide to enhance traffic management across the country. He said this at the Special Martial National Retreat in Abuja with the theme promoting safe transportation through public awareness and enforcement strategies. Oyeyemi Ajayi reports. Is an in house meeting of top leadership of the Federal Road Safety Corps Special Marshal to rub minds on strengthening better road safety on the highways. 
Issues of concern highlighted as major challenge of operation on the roads include poor enforcement of road safety laws, which they believe should even be reviewed for better road safety management in the country. There are lots of awareness on uh, the danger of dangerous driving in, on the road. We also know that on the roads in Nigeria, we have poor vehicular integrities. Compliance and enforcement are critical elements of road safety. We appeal to the Honorable the Minister to step up the enforcement of the Federal Road Safety Commission Act 2007, which I must say is overdue for review. While we looking, we look at the issues bothering us, let's remember that one very crucial instrument in achieving our set goal as a core is to sustain the current level of education and to improve the level at which we are. Special Marshal, though a voluntary service, yet an important integral part of the Federal Road Safety Corps, especially in the areas of patrol operations, traffic control, public enlightenment, as well as sponsorship of public enlightenment programs of the Corps, and they serve as image makers for the Corps through advocacy. Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTA News. President Bola Tinumbu congratulates former Lagos State Governor Mabatunde Raji Fashola on his 61st birthday. The president joins family, friends and well wishes to celebrate one of Nigeria's most gifted minds on this special occasion. While commending Fashola for his services to the nation, President Tinumbu prays for many more years in good health for him and his family as well as his, re his renewed vigor as an active voice and stakeholder in building a greater Nigeria. And on a sad note, Vice President Kashim Shatima leads federal government delegation to Kefi, Nasarawa State, to offer condolences to the Minister of State for Police Affairs, Hajia Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, on the passing of her mother, Hajia Aisha Suleiman Danladi. The Vice President specially conveyed President Tinubu's condolence message to the family over the demise of their mother. On everyone's neck, and the beauty of her life, that every person that I've encountered so far has been sharing our comments on her. May Allah grant her a end of the ghost, and may Allah grant the family the fortitude to be her. Al Haji Bala Mohammed Fari, on behalf of the family, expressed deep appreciation for the high level visit. Late Haji Aisha Suleiman Danladi died on Thursday, June 27, 2024, at the age of 66. All right, we'll go on a break now. When we come back, we'll begin our conversation on ending estimated billing and FG's release of 21 billion naira for discos. You don't want to miss that. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Before we begin our conversation on ending estimated billing and of course FG, um, federal government's release of 21 million, billion naira rather, you know, for discos, we'll bring you some reports now. I don't know why I'm mixing up the billions for the millions. Nigeria's power sector has a huge metering deficit as more than half of the country's electricity consumers are still on estimated billing 11 years after privatization of the sector. But there have been interventions by both the federal government and the distribution companies to close the metering gaps. Joshua Ojito will tell us more on these initiatives and their impact, of course. Nigeria has 12.3 million electricity customers, a figure from the National Bureau of Statistics 2024 first quarter report. Out of the 12.3 million customers, 5.9 million customers are metered, while the remaining 6.4 million customers still on estimated billing. 
although since the partial privatization of the power sector in 2013 and with continuous growth in number of electricity customers, there have been concerted efforts by both federal government and the distribution companies to close the metering gap. From credit advance payment for metering implementation, CAPME, to meter asset provider, MAP, and the National Mass Metering Program, Nigeria is yet to meter all its electricity customers due to challenge of funding. Include the mass metering program in the Siemens agreement and see, will it work or it will not work? Every home, every customer will have a meter. I tell you because I know that the Siemens agreement it's a government-to-government -government transaction. Federal government, again, under the Presidential Metering Initiative, recently approved the release of 21 billion naira to the 11 distribution companies to meet our customers on estimated billing, particularly those on ban A feeder free of charge. The latest intervention is under the Meter Acquisition Fund, which guarantees credit worthiness of distribution companies by creating revenue stream from the market funds for metering. 250 billion will be provided on a yearly basis for us to fund this meter acquisition plan. And I believe that once we take off on this plan, the issue of estimated billing will become a thing of the past. As the 6.4 million electricity customers await the rollout of more meters soon, it is expected that federal government ambitious plan to provide 2 million meters yearly for the next five years is expected to close the metering gap in the sector. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Well, they say more investment and enumeration of household is germane to addressing the metering deficit in the country. Joel Papola reports that experts in the power sector say with more Nigerians connecting to the national grid, demand for meters is expected to surge. But this narrative will change with release of funds to the discourse. The power sector is pivotal to the nation's economy, with successive administration offering input on ways of improving the narrative through investment. Worried by the increasing demand of Nigerians for prepaid meters, the federal government released 21 billion naira for the distribution companies to meet the huge metering gap in the country and end the era of estimated billing in Nigeria. The current price of prepaid meters varies depending on the face, with single face costing around 106,000 naira, while the three face is above 140,000. What we should also note is that consumers are not supposed normally to be affected by the cost of metering because they're supposed to be metered by the discos. The only reason why um, that cost comes to public knowledge or is because um, of what we call the meter asset provider. is a scheme that was created so that people that um, cannot wait for the metering program from the discos to get to them can go and make purchases and um, they get paid back in forms of energy. Of course, it's, the, it's a very good one. It's a laudable uh, step and it's a step in the right direction. But my issue for critical concern for me is that we need cascade into a constant supply of power. The initiative by the government experts agreed could be the much needed catalyst for Nigeria's power sector. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NT News. All right, let's bring in our guest to begin the conversation, Mr. Uket Obonga. He's a power sector analyst and executive secretary, Power Consumers Advocates of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Obonga, for joining us on Weekend Vow. Thank you for having me and good evening. Good evening to you too. You've been following the reports, of course, and now the concern is that no consumer wants to be billed on estimated basis. You know, they want to be billed based on what they consume. And good news, the federal government has intervened. Um, 21 billion naira to the discos. How would you react to that? Well, thank you very much for that question. Uh, 21 billion naira to meter on metered customers. Well, it's a good effort on the part of uh, the federal government uh, the question is that uh, how many meters are they going to procure with 21 billion? 
under the National Mass Metering Program, the federal government through CBN released 14.6 billion, I think in 2021 or 2022, to meter 260,000 to procure 260,000 meters. Considering the current exchange rate, I'm talking in terms of Naira to the dollar, 200 and uh, uh, 200, uh, how do I put it, 21 billion. If you divide 21, you do simple arithmetic of uh, dividing 21 billion. Uh, uh, by 100 and uh, say 5,000 Naira per single face meter. If we are going to locate it between, you know, talk in terms of the single face meter. If you divide one uh, uh, 21 billion by uh, 105,000 per meter, you are going to have something in the neighborhood about 200,000 meters. And we are talking of a metering gap that, according to what their report here said, is about 6.4 million. 6.4 million. So, releasing 21 billion, well, is a good start, but to me, uh, the realities on ground uh, don't really, uh, it doesn't really make a, 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 enough sense that we are going this way. Because even the figures of 6.4 billion and the 12 point uh, something billion that they are banding as the actual number of Nigerian, uh, Nigerian uh, customers in electricity, those figures, those numbers don't really add up. They are not reliable. They are not reliable. Okay. What, what do I mean? Okay. We are talking of a population of two, over 200 million. 200 million and a country with about 49 million households. And we, you are now telling us that only 12 point, uh, uh, whatever number, 12 million Nigerians are in electricity. This is, I mean, it's unbelievable. This is what happened during the period of privatization. Okay. When they threw up the figure of 5.4, 5.2 million uh, uh, customers, Nigerians in electricity. Which okay, Mr. True. Obonga, yes. I'd like to come in there. Yeah. Um, it's good you've done the maths for us and the, as you've broken down the estimates and all of that. Um, but we're looking at solution now because a lot of people, of course, are affected by this estimated billing. And the federal government's concern is ending that by bridging the gap of metering. Now, we cannot overlook, you know, the metering value chain. And this is why some experts have called for investment in metering infrastructure you know, promoting local metering manufacturers. What's your take? Yes. Um, when the federal government uh, came up with this intervention, the national mass metering intervention, and equally the MITO that dealt with uh, or that threw up service-based tariff, hmm. emphasis was on what? Encouraging local man uh, meter manufacturers, you know, to manufacture or produce meters. But the, whole, the way the whole thing is going and what is really happening, for instance now, the local man manufacturers have ramped up the price of meter. You are talking of closing a metering gap. And at the same time, you are making it impossible to throw your price, the prices of meters, for the common man to be able to pay 105,000 or 200 and something thousand naira per is a, 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 a meter. How many Nigerians can afford to pay this money? So we are aware that out there, with $10, $15, $20, $25, you can procure and acquire a meter, which functions very effectively. But now coming down to Nigeria, because of uh, the monopoly that a few people are ganging up and getting these things from government, and people are pushing it and making it very easy. Liberalize meter uh, uh, metering in Nigeria. I can order a meter for ten dollars. What is if you multiply ten dollars uh, ten by one thousand four hundred and fifty? We are talking about fourteen thousand naira per meter. 
Okay, um, Mr. Obonga, of course, um, a strong legal framework will do the magic there, but let's take a break. We'll be back with the conversation. Please stay tuned. You're normal now, okay? Got it, going. Thank you so much for staying tuned. The conversation is ending estimated billing. But we'll bring you a report from Kanu before we pick up with our conversation. Electricity consumers, or rather customers, on the estimated billing in Kanu decried inconsistencies in billing system in the face of erratic power supply. Fatima Sanusi Karai reports that owners of small and medium enterprises alleged sharp practice among distribution companies. Power supply in Nigeria has been epileptic for years with efforts by successive administrations to address the issue falling short. The fragmentation of the defunct National Electricity Power Authority NEPA into generation, transmission and distribution companies was intended to enhance power supply in the country. However, electricity consumers in Kano believe that this policy has made little or no difference in terms of steady power supply. To make matters worse, the different billing system introduced by distribution companies, including prepaid meters and estimated billing, have sparked controversy. All through today, we haven't had more than five hours of electricity, but the distribution company will still bring the outrageous bills. You know my business relies on electricity, and we've complained about the issue. They promised to look into the matter. Because our own is estimation, they, they did not give us meter or something like that. So they just said, oh, now, this was we're supposed to use per month. So, so at times when they, they, didn't, they didn't give us light, but, but according to what they asked us to pay, we must pay. Investigations reveal that the unavailability of prepaid meters is a major factor in estimated billing. According to National Bureau of Statistics, over 6 million electricity consumers in the country lack prepaid meters. What is most important in terms of uh, electricity supply is the reliability, availability and reliability. Uh, once this is actually achieved, uh, customers will actually be smiling, uh, they will not be complaining. The federal government has also launched initiatives to accelerate meter distribution for a smooth transition and proper billing. In Kano, Fatima Senusi Garai, MTA News. And from Enugu, we hear there is a growing agitation among electricity consumers across the southeast zone of the country as they demand an end to estimated billing by the Enugu Electricity Distribution Company. The new slogan is no prepaid meter, no business. This is also as NTA Enugu has dragged the regional distribution company to the National Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission over what it described as illegal disconnection of power supply to the network center. Let's hear from Comfort IM. Over the years, electricity consumers in Enugu Zone have lamented an indiscriminate billing system by the distribution company EEDC. The agitations became more intense with the banned categorization of supplies, aggrieved unmetered and postpaid customers who are aligning with a pressure group known as the Southeast Electricity Consumers Association Seeker, hinge their demand for free installation of the prepaid meter on the approval of 21 billion naira by NEC for the procurement of electricity meters by distribution companies. Every electricity consumer should be metered. No more estimated billing payments. EEDC spokesperson Emeka Eze, when contacted by NTA for clarification on the issuance of free meters, said he was not disposed to speak. NTA Nugu Network Center had following a contested overestimated bill for the month of May 2024 been disconnected by the EEDC only after three days of notice. You said you want to install me and you are busy disconnecting us. Huh? Where is the meter? He said he want to install meter. He didn't come with any meter. The station has lodged its complaints with the NEC. In Enugu Comfort, I am NTA News. All right, Mr. Um, 
Obonga is still very much around, Mr. Obonga. You just saw the reports, and Enugu is also not left out. But we thank God we have NERC, that's the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. And we hear just not too long they find 11 distribution companies, you know, for non compliance and with that mandatory capping of um, estimated billing to metered customers. Um, in terms of compliance and the regulators, you know, to these distribution companies, because that's where we're seeing the gap. Um, what's your take on that? Well, um, compliance, uh, if uh, there are regulations made or ordered issued by the regulator, they should have a mechanism or a structure to do what? Monitor compliance. But if there is no such thing like you don't have a structure, you don't have a mechanism mm -hmm. to monitor, you have just wasted your time. We are aware for a very long time since the, uh, the introduction of capping, estimated bills that the discos, most of the discos don't comply with. They bill customers as they feel. They, they do it and they do it with impunity. Nobody, they don't bother. So the only way NEC can you know is to brace up. The regulator has to brace up and put a machinery in motion in place, a structure in place. Well, you sympathize with NEC because uh, they are very few in number. You have less than a thousand or so, a few thousand, to monitor this thing across the country. So they actually have to look inwards, restructure NEC, engage more hands, even if it means engaging consultants, you know, engaging the civil society uh, organizations across the country. Because what is really going on, I keep on saying that uh, the uh, SBT is one of the greatest frauds in the system because uh, uh, you are giving, you say you are giving, you, uh, uh, consumers are being, you know, a bill based on the number of hours of electricity supplied to them. And when you go out there, you discover that that is not true. Nigerians are paying for darkness. And the capping we are talking about here, the, uh, nobody is really in full control. It's just recently that a few civil society organizations have gone in there and exposed this thing that uh, uh, the regulator is not, uh, uh, sanctioning some of them. We shouldn't go that way. There should be a structure in place to handle these issues. Like you say, enhancing the capacity of the regulators is also one way out. Yes. Um, but let's also look at the role of um, the private sector, you know, to ease the burden. Um, still bridging the gap of metering um, for the country. Um, you are an advocate for consumer, um, power consumers advocate rather. Um, what, what would be your recommendation as regard having the private sector come in to ease the burden? At the start of the conversation, you said 20 billion naira will not be enough. So what role can the private sector play? Well, already the power sector has been privatized. Uh, private investors uh, 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 took over 60% of the equities in the various companies that were privatized. So it's not a question of calling on private in a, a sector. The private sector is now involved. The distribution companies and the generation companies, the Jenkos, are private entities that came in in 21st of November 2013. The issue of bridging the metering gap is not so much as to what we are saying or what people think. Number one, there is no reliable data, no reliable market data. We don't know the actual number of Nigerians in electricity. We don't know. And if we don't have that number, how can you be talking of bridging a, 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 a metering gap that you don't know the number of people, the total number of people that, in uh, that are using electricity? The discourse, according to their spokesman, uh, under the Association of, Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, they will tell you they have 25 million to 30 million Nigerians using electricity. The uh, regulator will tell you about today, they will tell you 12 million, tomorrow 13 million, and so forth. So we don't have the accurate data. So if we are talking about bridging the metering gap, number one thing is that there must be a nationwide customer enumeration, which has to be intentional, which has to be deliberate, for us to really capture the number of Nigerians. That, and when we are talking of metering here, oh, 5 million, 6 million a meter. What are the obsolete, uh, dysfunctional meters that are hanging around? I was in Portaco some time ago, and we took a census of a street. 
We enumerated 370 something uh, uh, so called meters and more the metered customers. And we discovered that 62 or so percent of those were the old analog meters of uh, former defunct NEPA or PSCN that are just hanging there. And they constitute the number of meters the discos are banding. So these customers, though they have these black boxes hanging there, they are not being read, they are not functioning. So if we are serious as a nation, we want to solve this problem of closing the metering gap, number one, we have to know the number of Nigerians that are using electricity. And how do you do that? You conduct a nationwide customer enumeration. I have said that repeatedly. It is until you have gotten the accurate and reliable data, then you can be talking of closing a metering gap, determining the number of people that are metered, truly metered, and those that are not metered. Okay, yeah. um, Mr. Obonga, yeah. we'll continue to monitor development and we hope that those involved will do the needful, um, especially from the part of the distribution companies. Thank you so much for your contribution on Weekend File. Um, he is a power sector analyst and executive secretary, power consumers advocates of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take some news from the foreign scene, Egypt's LCC. Um, okay, before we bring you the news from the global scene, let's take a break, please. Thank you for staying tuned. And now we bring you that global update I was itching to bring. Egypt's LCC and EU chief Von de Leyen launches new joint investment conference and Emmanuel Macron faces critical test in France snap polls as voters go to the polls on Sunday. Charles Alpha will tell us more. A high level European Union delegation led by EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is in Egypt to take part in the EU Egypt Investment Conference, which began on Saturday. The two day conference in the new administrative capital east of Cairo brings together more than 1,000 participants, including ministers, officials, European financial institutions, and chief executives from various sectors from both the EU and Egypt. During the conference, both sides are expected to sign an agreement for the first 1 billion euro package of macro-financial assistance. Additionally, 20 memorandums of understanding worth 60 billion euros are set to be signed between Egypt and European companies. In other news, French President Emmanuel Macron faces critical tests in France snap polls as voters go to the polls on Sunday for the first round of snap legislative elections. Voting will end by 8 p.m. local time on Sunday, and France's public broadcaster is expected to announce a projection soon after. In the meantime, Mongolian's ruling party emerged from this week's polls with its parliamentary majority significantly diminished on Saturday after a campaign dominated by graft fears and the state of the economy. It's really important to help young people to get jobs and reduce the unemployment. And it's important to support our domestic manufacturing. This is what I think the new president should do. Charles Alva, NT News. It's 21 days to the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris. And our countdown to the biggest sports fiesta continues with Badi Adelaide. Hello and welcome to the Paris 2024 Olympics countdown. Now, the Paris 2024 Olympic Games will be the biggest event ever organized in France as Paris will become the center of the world and so much more from July the 26th. On our countdown today, we take a look at a few figures about the 33rd Olympics. Firstly, there will be billions of television viewers worldwide with 350,000 hours of TV broadcast. Millions of spectators are expected to throng the 35 venues with about 10,500 athletes competing. It will be 19 days of competition 
with 329 events. I think France is really prepared. They've had a few um, hiccups here and there. Um, it's normal with the Olympics uh, because of the scale and magnitude of athletes and fans around the world coming um, to Paris. Um, but I think France, they've done well so far. Security-wise, they have been doing their security checks. We know we've had one or two attacks um, sometime this year and last year. So. They are really, they are ready, the city of France. Now the question is, is the IOC ready? So it's the IOC now we should be asking. Well, athletes will compete in 32 sports at this year's Olympics, including four additional sports, which we will talk about in our next countdown. That's a bit for today. I am Bade Adeleye. Thank you, buddy, and you have to stay tuned to NTA for the countdown. And that's Weekend File. Thank you for your time. I'm Ruth Aguele. Enjoy your night.